Welcome ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to find the missing parts of a triangle, uh, of an oblique triangle, using the law of sines. Now we want to use the law of sines when we're given a triangle either as angle side angle or angle angle side. We could also use it for side side angle, but that's going to be in a different video. So for this video I'm just going to focus on angle side angle and angle angle side. And again using the law of sines. Um, and again notice that these are oblique triangles where this is an acute tri uh, oblique triangle where we have all acute angles and as well as over here is going to be an obtuse oblique triangle. But notice these are not right triangles, that's why we have to use the law of sines. Now one of the things we want to remember when we're going through the law of sines is understanding that all the angles of a triangle add up to 180. It doesn't matter if it's a right triangle, an oblique triangle, acute, obtuse, you know, right? It doesn't matter, they all add up to 180. So when using the law of sines, it's very important to be able to have a ratio. All right, and we need to have a ratio of its side length to its angle. And notice how the side length and this angle are opposite of one another on the triangle. So when you look at uh, a problem like an angle side angle, you notice that we don't have any ratios. We have the angle B, but we don't have side length B. We have side C, but we don't have the angle C. And notice, notice that the upper uppercase letters are the angles and the lowercase are the side lengths. And then again, we have A, the angle A, but we don't have the side length A. So when doing the law of sines, we got to have a, what we're going to do is create a proportion. Well, to create a proportion, we got to at least have the length and the angle of one of our sides. Well, if I notice that all the angles in a triangle add up to 180, I could write this equation saying C equals 180 degrees minus 54 degrees minus 82 degrees. Now, I could do this in my head, but I don't want to make sure I get it wrong here. And I also want to make sure... Um, that I'll be using my calculator because I'm going to be doing a lot of problems, especially for evaluating for sine and cosine and tangent um, in my calculator. So, first thing is to find the angle C. The other thing I also want to notice is notice how I used all my angles. I put the degree symbol on there. A lot of times during these problems, you're going to mix. You might mix up what the angle is compared to the side length because they're going to be kind of similar to each other. Um, so just be very careful um, with that. Whenever you're dealing with degrees, make sure you put in that degree symbol. So I'll just do 180 minus 52 minus 82, and I'm getting 46 degrees. Okay, so therefore, that is going to be 46 degrees, and I'm going to put that in red because that is going to be an angle that I, or a value that I have found. Well, now you see that I have the ratio of 46 degrees over 16, or 46 degrees and C of 16. So therefore, now I can write, um, I can use a proportion from my law of sines. Now you can see I have three proportions. What that just means, means is each ratio is equal to uh, the next ratio. So when solving though a proportion, we only, or solving, we only need to have a proportion. One ratio equal to another ratio. So I have the ratio of, a, of C over sine of C, and I just need to set that to either solve for A or for B. And it doesn't really matter in this case. Let's do A, A over sine of A. Now, what's nice about this, though, is I do know what the value of C is, which is 16 all over the sine of C, which is 46 degrees. And that's equal to A, I don't know what A is, all over the sine of, ba, 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 what is the sine of 54 degrees? OK. Um, actually, you know what? Let's just write this. I don't want to get too confusing here. So C is 16 over the sine of 46 degrees equals A over the sine of 54 degrees. All right. Now, to solve for, um, to solve for A, we need to use our inverse operations. And I'll go through this uh, one, one time for you on this problem, because for the rest, I don't want to spend too much time taking too much time showing inverse operations. But we need to find the value of A. So to do that, I need to, to get rid of dividing it by sine of 54. So I'm going to multiply by the sine of 54 on both sides. So what that does, now that divides out, that leaves me with an A. So therefore, to find the value of A, I simply have the equation A equals 16 times the sine of 54 degrees all over the sine of 46 degrees. So now I simply just need to evaluate for um, that value. So I'm just going to go back to my calculator. Again, make sure when you're dealing with your calculator that you have the mode is in degree mode. Whenever you're dealing with sine and cosine, make sure you know what type of angles you're dealing with. And I'm simply just going to type in 
16 times the sine of 54. And then I'm going to divide that by the sine of 46. Now, it's not going to give you an exact value. It's going to give you a rounded value. And typically, usually what we like to do is um, all, you know, usually round to based on uh, the number of digits you know, or, or our, um, our important digits in our problem. Or the problem might say, you know, round it to the nearest tenth or to the nearest hundredth and so forth. I always like to just kind of round it um, to the nearest hundredth unless otherwise noticed or if I have um, uh, scientific digits that I'll be using or significant digits, I'm sorry. So therefore, I'm just going to say 17.99. So that's going to be my value here. So A is 17.99. Now, I still need to solve for B, though, correct? Well, rather than using this value, since I rounded this value, um, or since I approximated this, I'm, going to, I'm not going to want to use this angle in my next, uh, to solve for B. I'm going to want to go back and, again, use the same ratio. But now, I'm going to use C. So I'm still going to have 16. Let's do this. Uh, so I'm still going to have 16 over the sine of 46. But now I need to solve for b. So it's going to equal b over the sine of 82 degrees. Now, just like I had to multiply sine of 54 on both sides, I'm going to do the same thing, but it's going to be multiplying by sine of 82. Either way, you can just understand that it's going to be the sine of 82 degrees. Oops, let's write it first. It's going to be 16 times the sine of 82 degrees all over the sine of 46 degrees. So now what I'll simply do is just take 16 times the sine of 82. And then I'll divide that by the sine of 42. And what I get is 23.67. Again, I'm going to round to the 100th, so that'd be 23.68. Should do approximation. So therefore, I have 23.68. And I'll do that in red just so you can remember that those are 23.68. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you solve when you have a triangle with angle, side, angle. Make sure that you use the sum of, ang of, sum of angles for a triangle to find your missing side. And then you're just basically using the law of sines and proportions to solve. Now for the next problem, um, you can see here we have angle, angle, side. Now you can see that we already have a ratio, right? So we're all set. We already, we're good. We have our, we have our next ratio. Um, all we need to do then is just create a ratio, or we can solve for b instantly. So by knowing this, I could say that I have, um, I could say that b over the sine of 42 degrees is equal to c over the sine of 96 degrees. Right? And then I have all this information. The only thing I don't have is B, so I'm going to have to solve for that. So I have B. Oops. Sorry. I didn't want to plug those in yet. So that's B is going to be over the sine of 42 degrees equals C, which is 12 over the sine of 96 degrees. OK, again, hopefully you realize then to solve for B, I'm going to have to multiply by the sine of 42 on both sides. So I have B equals. Um, 12 times the sine of 42 degrees all over the sine of 96 degrees. So again, I just go back to my calculator. And I type in 12 times the sine of 42. And then I just divide that by the sine of 96. And I get um, 8.073, round to the 100, so that's 8.07. So that's going to be approximate 8.07. So that's B. So that's going to be 8.07. Now again, what's really important is to find A. Again, I can use my inequality theorem. So I can basically say that A is equal to 180 minus 96 degrees minus 42 degrees. And I could have done this early, you know, first if I wanted to, if I wanted to figure out A. It doesn't really matter which order you go in. So I just do 180 minus 96 minus 42, and that's going to equal 42. So therefore, this angle is 42 degrees. Now, if I notice here, if these two angles are both 42, um, therefore this is an isosceles triangle. Therefore, these two side lengths are going to be exactly the same. So therefore, I can justify that this would be 8.07. 
However, just to make sure I can do this one last time, I'm going to show you this real quickly. Well, I'll just go ahead and practice. Well, actually, I don't even need to show it to you. If I go ahead and use the same ratio here, um, if I go ahead and use the same ratio, I could do 12 over this is equal to the sine of 40, or A over the sine of 42, which is the exact same ratio that we had over here. It's just different variables. So therefore, we get the exactly the same result. So therefore, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you find the missing sides of a triangle using the law of sines for angle side angle and angle angle side. Thanks.